but something something clicked where I was like, I really, really like this. Mm -hmm. And I think I started wanting to play a lot more on my own all the time. Mm. If I had my druthers, I would not just not, I wouldn't go to school. I would just, I would rather have just stayed home and play guitar. That's right. I used to have to make sure if you had any homework, it was done first. Because once you got on the guitar, it was hard to get you off. Jazz rocks, eh? <laughs> Welcome to Jazz Rocks with Adam, the Canadian edition. As you can see, I'm filming this after I've gotten back from Canada, but I just, before we get started, I just wanted to warn you that I'm not well equipped to film outdoors and a lot of the footage I took was outdoors. You need some extra gear that I currently don't own in order to mitigate things like the wind. If I didn't forget my small handheld device for recording audio, I'm sure it would have been much better than the crappy microphone that's built into my camera. You'll hear the wind pick up and it gets really loud at times, so I apologize for that. You'll see me chuckling and laughing a bit throughout several places in the video. That's just my nature. But it was not all fun. It was a daunting trip. I almost didn't make it across the border. You're supposed to upload a proof of vaccination and passport to the Canadian government's Arrive Can app before you cross the border. I couldn't find anywhere in the app to upload my vaccination card, just the passport. After explaining to the border officer that I would have uploaded it if there was a place to do so, and that I had my vaccination card on me and that I was willing to show them it, they finally let me cross. It was a close call. The thoughts of traveling seven or seven and a half hours already that I would have to turn around and go back home was extremely stressful. Not to mention, I haven't seen my family in like three years. Two of those years, of course, was because the Canada-US border was closed due to the pandemic. They wouldn't have denied me entry, but I would have had to pay a lot of money to be quarantined for two weeks. I was only going to be in Canada for one week, not three weeks. I just wouldn't be able to see my parents at all. It just wasn't feasible. And then, as I'll explain later, it was also quite challenging to be in the house that I grew up in quite possibly for the last time. My parents need help and just can't manage living in the house I grew up in anymore, especially another winter. A lot of things have drastically changed in the span of three years. I'm not gonna lie, the hardest part of the trip was that it was really agonizing to see my dad, who was once a big, physically strong, tough as nails type of guy, having a hard time just doing simple tasks that many of us take for granted, along with the other things associated with his condition. I just feel really bad for my dad who has so much pride in life being stricken in this way and the burden of having to endure the symptoms of his disease. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video of my trip back to Canada. What's up? <laughs> my brother Bob, we're filling up the tank, heading to my parents. here 
and I've been here now for a few days for reasons that I won't get into now <laughs> I didn't get a chance to do any filming I was hoping to do that at the beginning of the trip partly mostly because it was raining a lot but it's a really nice day out today so I'm gonna take a drive around and show you where I grew up what the what it looks like and where I went to school and then uh, show you where one spot which is right across from my school where I used to play oh, quite a bit growing up where I got a lot of experience playing near Echo Bay Ontario in Laird Township which has a population of just a little over 1,000 people so I just turned out of my parents driveway and I'm driving across Highway 17 which is a major the Trans-Canada Highway connects Canada from either end at least on this end of the country it's called Highway 17 through Ontario you can see on my left this all, all used to be fields of, where farmers would grow Timothy for the cattle or corn as we're coming down the road here leaves are starting to change that time of year here's some uh, big bales of hay over here flying by I'm not sure what it's gonna look like because I haven't been here for a long time but right here is the school public school that I went to as a kid. It certainly isn't much to look at now and I don't even remember that tree being there but yeah this used to be Laird Central School. It's closed down it's not even a school anymore. There's a baseball diamond here doesn't resemble much of a baseball diamond anymore but there used to be one and there used to be a, a basketball court back here I remember that's been disassembled back in here oh, I see someone's put a door there in the gym that never used to be there and then you can't tell because it's not here anymore but there used to be a hockey rink Basically where my finger's pointing, right there. They used to play hockey in the winter time and soccer or football if you're the rest of the world. And all the classrooms used to be in this building here. There's a building over there. We're going to go check that out. Well, sorry I can't get in. See there, even just, I don't know how long they put this fence up because it's been so long since I've been here, but this here is what they call the gazebo. And many times, it's kind of hard to tell right now even that there's a stage right there. But I used to play on that stage nearly every summer there for the longest time. Bands used to play in, in this building and there's a beer gardens and people used to sit outside and and there was a horse show going on and different events and arm wrestling you name it tractor poles and and now it's kind of turned into more car racing than anything there's a there's a racetrack back here maybe we'll drive a little bit further into Bar River the actual Bar River even though I say I'm from Bar River Technically, I'm from Laird. Where my parents settled, my parents bought three acres or about a hectare of land inside of a cornfield, basically. Each block is a mile square. Let's keep taking a drive down the road here. And where I'm going to take you is a kind of a community hall in Bar River, the Bar River Hall. I, 
I've rehearsed with bands there before, or at least a band before, and also did a lot of gigs at this particular hall as well. And don't don't get me wrong, I didn't just play within a couple of miles of my own house growing up. I played all over the area. It definitely gave me a lot of experience, all from starting from the age of 12 when I joined the Musicians' Union and started doing gigs. We're coming up to it now. Here's the... Uh, Here's the Bar River Hall. I guess it's now called Bar River Community Center. Let's take a look around. So, walking around the hall, I mean, like I said, I used to rehearse with one certain band. So they would let you re rent out the whole hall <laughs> for an evening. And we would kind of almost have our own party sometimes in there and drink and rehearse. And, you know, back when you're young and stupid. And right here is another community rink that I first started playing hockey at. I could skate pretty well, but I just didn't know how to play hockey very well. And it's a different building now. If you look over over those trees, there's the Bar River right there. That is the Bar River that runs through. And my brother actually got written up in the paper. Him and two other kids saved a kid from drowning in the Bar River in the wintertime. Fell through the ice. And it was right around here, right, right near the rink. A little bit of, just down in there, there's a little bit of water down there. Just a little bit of water. And believe it or not, not right in this area, but further, further up. I actually used to swim <laughs> in the Bar River when I was a kid. You know, to be honest with you, I I haven't really been around these parts very often, and you know, this may be my last time at my parents' house. One of the last times. Anyway, maybe we'll take another drive around some more and see some other places. I'm still parked at the Bar River Hall, right across the street, is the church that I used to go to when I was a kid, Sunday school and stuff. Well, just to prove to you, people do farm here still. There's some cows out here. First thing I saw was this bull here. <laughs> had, to, had to pull over. I am at Laird Township Hall. And I used to do some gigs here. I don't think I ever played here that often. I don't think they usually had that kind of events here. But uh, you would come here to vote. This is usually a, a voting station. And I used to do Boy Scouts here. Well, this is new. I This wasn't here when I was a kid, that's for sure. It looks like it's a great place if you're a ornithologist or a bird watcher. Hundreds or thousands of years ago, maybe not even that long ago, this here used to be part of Lake George, which is a great big lake, which is the name of the road that my parents live on is Lake George Road. And I'm not sure that, but way, way in the distance there, I'm not even sure if you can see it, but there looks like there's an eagle's nest or something that's sticking up high. And right now it's kind of like almost swamp marsh-like, and the water is very, very low. If you were to see the lake 100 and 150 years ago, I'm sure it would come up just about to the roadway there. If you go thousands of years back, it would be much more water than that I'm sure but the water level has been dropping quite a bit every year since I was a kid I remember here's some lots of birds you can probably hear them maybe more than see them I'm not sure I guess I'll know when I take a look at the footage anyway just thought 
That would be interesting. I'm going to take you where I used to go swimming as a kid. Just a little kid. I heard it's not much of anything anymore. But we'll see. Come around the corner. Well, it still looks like a, a place to come swimming still to me. Got some playground stuff. I don't think that used to be there when I was a kid. Pretty bare bones. Maybe there was a swing set here or something. Yeah, let's go check it out. So yes, a lot of uh, a lot of the kids in the in this area used to go swimming here. And I kind of forgot about this stone. Centennial of Confederation Laird Township, Centennial Park. Developed by this township of Laird in permanent commemoration of the centennial of confederation in Canada in 1967. That's the year I was born. Canada was a hundred years old in 1967. And then of course, in Canada being bilingual, you have that in French, Francaise. The last time I was here was probably just to come look, not swim or anything like that, it was about nine years ago. And I don't think the water was this high then. Might have even been lower then. Lake George. And there. Kind of right about where my finger is, there used to be a, a floating dock that you could swim out to and you dive off and stuff. It's always fun. Help keep our border safe. If it's suspicious, report it. Americans trying to sneak over into Canada. Because <laughs> there's land over there. That's actually the U.S. That's how close to the U.S. border I, I grew up. Just thought I'd show you the, all the leaves on the ground that have turned color. All the multicolor leaves, all mostly maple leaves, I would imagine, here on the ground. It's not quite late enough in the fall here yet, because it's right now. It's super warm. I don't know how many degrees Fahrenheit it is, but it must be about I don't know, 27 degrees Celsius or something like that here. When I was growing up in this area, it would have been. Oh yeah, somewhere between 0 to 10 degrees this time of year. I remember the first snowfall would be usually sometime in October. And it's uh, usually around Halloween. Sometimes often was was, our, was the first snowfall in this area. Many times, sometimes before. But the first snowfall that would usually stay. And sometimes it was a big storm. I remember lots of times as a little kid going out trick-or-treating in a snowsuit with your costume over top, in a blizzard. <laughs> I took my guitar with me because I wanted to play my guitar on the stage at the Laird Fairgrounds one last time from memory's sake. But if you remember, everything was gated up. When I was a kid, there wasn't a fence around everything. So at Pumpkin Point, the spot where I swam as a kid, I got inspired to play. It ended up being an improvised stream of consciousness type of playing. Nothing was planned out. I guess I was feeling a bit nostalgic, being around things I haven't seen for a long time. As I started to play, I was trying to play memories and feelings of being a kid.
see what else we can see around the neighborhood. Maybe we'll go back to my parents' neighborhood and I'll show you around there. Just down the road from my parents, actually, about uh, a mile, about a mile, a private airport. And when I grew up, it were there were the buildings were nowhere near that size, <laughs> nor the planes that size. So there must be a fairly big runway. It's no big plane by any stretch of the imagination, but it's that plane that we're looking at right now is no small plane either. Interesting fun fact. There's a whole bunch of sandhill cranes here. In when I was born, they were rare, so they're, that's good that they're coming back. I mean, they were very rare in this area to see them when I was a kid. Every once in a while, you'll see them. It's good to see them come back in that big a number. They, I think, pesticide and everything. They were getting killed off. They almost sound like dinosaurs. the day before I leave to go back to New York and I just thought I'd give you a tour of around the property where I grew up. Um, I didn't get a chance to do that yesterday. It was more raining and plus it was Thanksgiving Day. I had people over for dinner and stuff like that. But uh, I'll just, uh, just a quick tour around. Um, obviously things are going to look a lot different than when I was a kid. I used to cut the grass by hand in here, it's really long, right in here we would have a garden, big garden, right in that area. At one point my dad used to have blueberry and strawberry bushes grown back there, but I think they all died now at this point. Something made a trail here. Maybe it was foxes or wolves. My mom said she, she saw a timber wolf back here one day. Could be deer. You never know anything. These trees that you see here along this ridge are massive comparison now and in the summertime they grow big and thick. But just on the other side of these trees was the cornfield that went all the way around our house. And it's kind of hard to see by the, with the camera now, but there's a fence line where the grass stops growing and then there's all trees. It doesn't look like it now, but that used to be a cornfield when I was a kid. You'd never know there was a cornfield here uh, right now, but... 40 years ago there was. It's amazing how quickly things grow in. Back in here, when I was a little kid, we used to have horses. And then, then later on when I was more in my early teens or something, my dad built a, a chicken coop here and we had chickens. Like I said, it's all grown in and then I think he tore a shed down and then built another one again to have chickens later on. Because that's not the original chicken shed from when I was a kid. There was a bigger one. But we used to have a lot of fresh, fresh eggs to eat. Best eggs ever. There's the view of the front of the house. It certainly sits up a lot higher than it used to when I was a kid. It's hard to imagine, but when I was about... 18, 19 years old, I had a 1949 GMC pickup that was parked right in here that I had envisioned and fixing it up, but then I just didn't have time. I ended up going to college to study music in Toronto and I ended up selling it. Superior Propane making a delivery the houses down here. While it's still not raining, I'm going to make a trip up the road here a little bit. Me and my brother used to ride our bikes up and down this road. Matter of fact, it's kind of paved right now, but when we were kids, it was just a gravel road. I think they 
think they paved the road probably when I was in grade 9 or 10 or something like that. Or as everyone says in the uh, US, the 8th or 9th grade. <laughs> ninth or tenth grade but here in Canada we say grade 8, grade 9, grade 10. So this is that field. Well it doesn't look like a field now but like I said but there used to be all corn that was growing up in this field and in this house that you see kind of covered in trees back there the first drummer I ever had in my band as a kid lived in that very house. His name was Darwin Hunter, and we used to jam on the front porch back in the day. <laughs> Looks like they got the house for sale. Yeah, we used to jam on that front porch when we were about 11, 12 years old, something like that. Let's walk down a little further, and I'll show you where the other guitar player, the bass player, and the leader of the first band I was in lived. We all lived on the same road, Lake George Road. I'm just cross here. <sighs> Looks like it's all growing in, but there used to be like a, I think they dug it all up. There's a culvert in there now, but this used to be all full of water, like a, a pond, and there used to be lots of bullfrogs and stuff in here growing up when I was a kid. Same thing with on the other side of the road. There doesn't seem to be any water in there anymore at all, or at least not much. There used to be like a, a, a creek with water coming all the way through here. So as we're coming up the road here, I'm gonna show you the house that one of my best friends and ended up being <clears throat> the bass player in my first band that was called Roy Brocklebank and the Outlaws. Parker Brocklebank played guitar along with me, myself, and Chris Brocklebank played bass. This is the house that we would rehearse in. Now mind you, we only had one rehearsal ever, but it was in the basement, or maybe, actually I think it was in the living room. And you can see there's a bigger creek here. I don't know if you can hear the water running or not. There's always more water in this creek. And it drains off on the other side of the road here. I don't even know if there's any beavers living in there anymore, but there used to be a beaver dam in there. There used to be a whole family of beavers. I have to say, it was a great, great place to grow up. Lots of things to do and explore when you're a kid. Although, I think my brother did more exploring than me. Um, once I got the guitar bug, I was always at home practicing more, or playing. Even though I didn't know I was practicing, I was just playing all the time. Sort of show you where I grew up. Just. What it was like. I mean, you know, it's much more grown in. There wasn't as many trees. The field is certainly grown in that was surrounded my parents' house. And even though the, the woods were thick, they weren't as thick as they were now. I remember when we were kids, we would walk through the bush. That's like really thick now. You wouldn't get very far before your face would be all scratched up. Anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm going to be heading back to New York um, tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And I had to come back and just check out the place one more time. It's not that I can't ever come back here again. It's just, you know, with COVID and it makes it hard. And my parents sort of ailing health. It's mostly my dad right now at this point. But, uh, you know, they're going to be putting the house up for sale. I don't know where they're going to be living at this point. But I had to come back and visit the old neighborhood. 
it at least one more time because they might not be living in the house that I grew up in by the time I'm ever back in this area again, so. Such is life though, right? Anyway, I'm gonna chime in here one last time. In this last segment of the video, I interview my parents. It's really more like a conversation, really. There's two things that I want to warn you about. You'll likely notice right away that my dad's arms shake. It's because he was diagnosed with Parkinson's about a year and a half ago. It started with tremors and has now progressed to involuntary shaking. It has also begun to affect his speech somewhat and his voice is a little softer than it used to be. He is also very hard of hearing, so he might think we're talking about one thing and then he realizes, oh, we're on that topic when he hears a certain word or something. So please keep these two things in mind while watching. Those are things that are out of his control. He's a very intelligent guy who often has wise things to say. To an outsider, it might appear that he's not too with it, but trust me, nothing could be further from the truth. Both my parents are the kindest people you'd ever meet. So you better not leave any rude or unkind remarks. Remember, that's my dad, my parents. I'll hunt you down. Just gonna ask them a few questions about living here, growing up here, maybe a little bit about me. Uh, Sheila Smale is my mom and Herb Smale is my dad. <laughs> What year did we move down here to Laird Township? Well, it was probably, uh, we bought the property uh, right after you were born, so it was probably 60, 68, yeah. 68, okay. Yep. And then, I wasn't playing guitar then, was I? Not yet. <laughs> what was it like when you guys first moved down here? Oh, you could see for miles of direction almost. It was kind of lonesome after living in the city. There, there wasn't all the trees all the way around like there no, is now. There was the no, very no. few trees. You could see Fields. the whole valley, the whole Bar River Valley, which was about five miles wide and mostly about five miles long. And, uh, I remember we could look out in any direction and see uh, our far away neighbors. And today you can't even see the high, uh, I mean the highway. Right. Well, you, you not unless you stand out on the roadway. Right. You can't even see any cars go by. Right. Every time I come here, it all looks so different every time. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's because you stay away so long at a time. <laughs> it, well, I'm living far away now. Exactly. <laughs> even farther than Toronto. What was life, life like here when, when growing up? Because my brother Bob wasn't born until two and a half or so years later. So That's right. Because I was one, one year old when we moved here, right? That's right. So I don't think we even had running water, right? No. No, not for a few years. I was going to say, for at least, I thought maybe three, four years or something, we had to go get water to... Yep. Something like that, yes. Until we had a well of our own right right yeah. um and then uh i forgot to introduce the dog daisy <laughs> i guess she had enough, she had enough of <laughs> so let's focus on me <laughs> okay <laughs> what was i like as a kid what did i do when i was from like say ages one onward to, to maybe six or seven. I remember you as a pretty well behaved baby and young child. Did what yeah, did what you were told? Stayed out of mischief? <laughs> Most Not of like time. now, right? <laughs> um what did I mostly do before I went to started going to school? Because I didn't start kindergarten until I was six, right? Yeah, because of when your birthday is, I think you had to wait that extra year. Right. And then by the time I got to grade one, I think it was grade one that I started taking guitar lessons, right? And I think I, think I remember you telling me that all I used to do was basically two things. 
was play in the driveway with my like toys, making roadways and stuff, and drawing. And there was lots of sand. Yeah, there was lots of sand out there. Yeah, that light post out there had all the sand around it, and you had all kinds of roads in there. Yeah, you'd never know there was sand around here now, but no. I remember, I remember Bob playing in the ditch, <laughs> going for a swim. Well, he was more like his dad. Than that way. <laughs> How far are we away from the biggest, the nearest city or town? Well, we're about sixteen miles, I think. And uh, twenty-six kilometers. I don't know. I, I still uh, confounded by that uh, metric system. <laughs> well, but some uh, things are easier in metric, right? Yeah. Well, but you grew yeah, up. You grew up with with uh, yeah. imperial system. Even I did. I mean, but it wasn't until what grade four or something like that we switched over to metric. Well, something like that. Yeah. A mile or six hundred feet. What's the difference? It all takes to see one step after another <laughs> to get there. Right, right. How much did I practice when I was younger? Depended on the day. That, I don't remember practicing a whole lot when I was well from seven, probably till like nine-ish, maybe nine and a half is when I started to kind of practice a little bit more on my own. Yeah, because you knew more. Right. And you could do a whole song rather than just plunking on the strings. Right. So it took a while. You had right. to get your fingers stretched to get, get with them where you wanted to be. You weren't very lit, big. Your hands weren't very big. Right. And then you were talking to about the F chord, that I wanted to give up on the F chord, right? Because right? <laughs> I just couldn't get that shape happening, my left hand. Right. I made a video about learning Scotch Boogie, the first song that I learned by year. What What did you think, Dad, when, when uh, you came home and I played it for you? Well, I was very excited. Well, of course, I'm always thrilled about hearing you play new music anyway. Always was. I'm, I'm thinking that was I was probably around 10 or 11. I can't remember how old I was when I when I learned that song. I don't remember either. But something But something clicked. Where I was like, I really, really like this. Mm -hmm. And I think I started wanting to play a lot more on my own all the time. Right. If I had my druthers, I would not just not, I wouldn't go to school. I would just, I would rather have just stayed home and play guitar. That's right. I used to have to make sure if you had any homework, it was done first. Because once you got on the guitar, it was hard to get you off. Well, I don't know if you ever heard this story or not before. But when, I think it was like around grade, somewhere between grade six, seven, maybe even grade eight, I remember telling the teacher that guitar comes first, and then if I have time for homework after that, then I'll do the homework. <laughs> but I don't, and I just remember the teacher just like, huh? <laughs> you're actually saying this to me? But I don't think you could get away with that now. No. No. Do you remember when the, the I, I think you were only in grade two as well. I got a phone call from the teacher saying that you were not paying attention. You were always looking out the window. Mm -hmm. So when I confronted you that right. night when you came home, you told, her, told me that you were not just looking out the window. You were doing whatever you do when you take guitar lessons. Thinking about the strings or, or whatever, so you could have it in your head. Wow. The next time you went to the school. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. So I was, they they just thought I was daydreaming, but I was actually yeah. doing something constructive that I liked to do. <laughs> Probably because, but I do yeah. remember telling you that I thought school was really boring. Mm -hmm. You'd rather be playing your guitar, even yeah. though you just started at it. And I think, I remember mm -hmm. Glenn Corbett. Remember him? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. He always, always is was in love with trucks and transports and would draw them constantly. Right. And I would do the same thing. I was always drawing guitars, <laughs> drawing guitars in my workbook and whatever and right. paper that I had or whatever. So, and both of us 
did what we drew. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. As far as I know, he probably still does drive transport, drive truck, right? Yes. He's uh, certainly doing so. He tried to quit and get out of it, but he had to get back into it. Mm -hmm. It's in his blood, I guess. Just recently. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back in time before I was ever born. When did you guys meet? At the riding stable. Because both of you guys were, were into horses we're, a lot. We're horse people. So you, you you were into horses before you even met Dad? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember a horse named Dale. Was it Dale? Was that Spring Creek that? Dale. That oh, Spring one. Creek Dale. Okay. He, didn't come to, he didn't come to after. Oh, near yeah, towards. Man. She had a horse called Babe. Wasn't that the one? Yeah. I got you, babe. <laughs> yeah. So rented horses at first. Right. You had that. You had to get your uh, feet wet, so to speak, right? Yeah, yes, Before yeah. you have owned a horse. Were, were you working yet at the time? Oh yeah. I was okay. Working at the stable, right? And making good money. Mm -hmm. Right. For back then it was yeah. Well, that's what I mean. For the time you were mm -hmm. making good money. You you couldn't take six months or a year leave to have me. Like, like like you can now. Nope. What a maternity leave, that's what uh, they call it. Not in those days. Nope. No, you had to quit your job that's just right. just to have me. That's crazy. I just I just find that crazy. <laughs> Always did. I was just baffled. Mm. Why why couldn't you go back to work after? Why did you have to quit? Is you have you had to choose back then, right? Yeah. It's either you want a job or a family, make up your mind. That's right. Wow. Well, and then you worked in construction. Right. Uh, and you you worked in construction from a very young age. Oh, yeah, so 14. Oh, 14. I thought it was 16. But... No. No, I started at 14. But full-time wasn't until 16. Uh, I, made 50, I made 50 cents an hour. And that was probably okay money back then. It seemed good to me. Because, <laughs> like, a... a, a um, mm. Probably a loaf of bread back then cost what? Well, I, I couldn't even tell you. Five cents? Something? <laughs> Ten well, cents? I think probably would have been more than that, but well, things have sure changed as your, far as prices go. And your, your paycheck probably seemed to go farther than it does now. Oh, much farther. Yeah. Yes. When we're in the grocery store, we can see the difference. So, w uh. when you guys met, you were you were already out of high school and working at that mm -hmm. point, because you lived in the same basic neighborhood, just, Almost, just yes. a couple of streets over, right, or a few streets right. over. Didn't you like know each other from before that? Well, sort of. I, mean, I knew of her. Okay. When I met her at the stable, I, I I had an idea. I knew she went to the Salvation Army, because yeah. I remember seeing her there. All when? How long were you guys dating before you got? Hitched, as they say. What, about a year? Not much more than a year, anyway. Oh, yeah? About a year. So, when... Maybe you were... So, you are about 22 at the time, then? Maybe? Something like that? Mm. You were 20, 21, maybe? 21, 21, yeah. 21, I was 20. Yeah, people did get married earlier then, didn't they? Yeah. Seemed to be that way. I didn't. I didn't get married till I was what, forty. Well, you were too busy. Forty-five or something. <laughs> Forty-six, <laughs> something like that. Um. But anyway, I'm not married now. By the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you only only together for a year, and then you got married. Right. And then, how long were you married before you had me? Around three years. Three years? Mm. Yeah, we three. got married in 1964, and you were born in 1967. That makes sense. So you were, you got married the same year that Kennedy got shot then, right? That's that? right. Yeah. The okay. year, the day he got shot was the same day that he gave me my engagement ring. Really? Yeah. I don't think I ever knew that before. Like I, I got it. I forgot all about that. Well, I didn't forget 
he gave it to me like the evening before when I wasn't very long in the day at work when the news came out that he'd been shot. Wow. That's crazy. Well, I was shocked to hear it myself. Well, that's it certainly uh, shook the world for sure at the time. And so you were married for three years before I was born. So I guess you were married for four years by the time you moved here. Yeah, that'd be about right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And then I I remember around that age of eleven deciding that that's what I wanted to do with music. Uh, do you do you two remember me? one morning marching into the bedroom and announcing to you that that's what I wanted to do. I made up my mind. Play, play music? Yeah, for well, a living? Well, for a living. Not really, because you were, that's all you talked about. <laughs> yeah, it seemed to be a pretty powerful uh, or common knowledge that that's what you wanted to do anyway. Right. So, it seemed like you always wanted to play the guitar. But you don't remember that specific incident, though, right? Because I, no, no, I don't no. blame you. I'm, it's not like I'm like all bummed right. out or something. It's just, it's just like, yeah, oh, whatever. That's cool, or that's nice. It yeah. could, it could have been something like that, or, exactly. or we already know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, Whoa. like the old saying, hey, kids say the darndest things. Right, but my, my grandfather was uh, seven years old when he used to sit beside her, stand beside the railroad track. And he watched them big engine load of steam locomotive engines go by. And he said, that's what I'm going to do when I grow up. And that's what he did. And that's exactly what he did till the day he retired. And then that's great grandpa, Herb, or my great grandpa Herb. Yes. Um, and then I'm the fourth Herb in the family. What was that? I'm the fourth Herb in the family. Yes. Was the Herbs ahead of you? Because he, no, well, there'd be, or, he was the first know? Herb. <clears throat> and then there's your Uncle Herb, right. which would have been his son. Right. And myself. And you, you're Herb three, three Herbert yeah. three, and then I'm four. And you're four, right? yeah. exactly. Because uh, most people don't know, but uh, I was named Herbert Adams Mail. I went by my second name my whole life. I've changed my name since, but but uh, Herbert's still in there. I didn't didn't take that out. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> So legally, my name now is Adam Herbert Smith. But uh, trust me, it was just easier for paperwork. Your papers, please, papers. They must match. <laughs> yes. Um, and then it wasn't about until a year right after that where the universe said, okay, that's what you want to do. And then, or I think it was Maxine, Roy Brocklebank's wife saw us jamming and heard us jamming. It was me, Chris, and Darwin. And she, I think she put the bug in Roy's ear somehow. Why don't they sounded pretty good? Like you should check them out, like or whatever. And then he got the idea to start up a band. So that'd be like one year later. I was probably jamming with Chris and Darwin at Hunter on Hunter's porch. And one time we were, we happened to jam. I think maybe some neighbors were complaining we were too loud or something. Maybe, and and uh, Chris said, "Well, just let's just come play in the basement or the living room or something like that." So then she Maxine had a set up and for almost like an audition for Roy to hear us, and I and he started thinking. I think and like what would be maybe he thought it would be a little bit of a novelty like. To have kids back him up as, as the only adult, because how old would he have been at the time? Maybe forty or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, in his early forties, anyway. Something like that. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but. Um, so I was about I was twelve years old, and that's how I found out my first name was Herbert. I had to apply for a social insurance number in order to join the musicians union. And I was like, that's my birth certificate? It's Herbert Adam? I always thought it was Adam Herbert. But... I didn't want two Herbs in the same house. Right. Too confusing. Which one's Herb and which one's Herbert and which one's Herbie or whatever, right? Herbie-est? 
Little Herb. <laughs> Herblet. <laughs> <laughs> what was that that Bob used to call you? Herbie song? <laughs> he, used to, he used to hate that. <laughs> but actually in Japanese, that was like a sign of respect when you called somebody son at the end. Herbie song. <laughs> I think he was Yankee was upset because he thought he was saying something respectful to you that he learned like from watching cartoons or something. Who's this? Bob. Bob. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like it was a title, mm -hmm. something to bow down to or something. And so yeah, that that's how I got my. I started music with Roy and playing country music and then I guess, well, even before that, I guess I was jamming with you, right, Dad? Right. You're you're playing banjo and kind of bluegrass tunes and folk tunes. Right. John Denver, I remember. Yeah. A few Canadiana Glenn, type. Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. A few Canadiana type tunes. Yeah. Like, uh, what's that dusty old farmer? Uh, yeah. Work in his field. That was, I can't remember that. The farmer song. Right. Murray McLaughlin. Is that who that is? No. It's like, uh... I thought it was Murray McLaughlin. Hey. How does Murray McLaughlin that saying that? Oh, oh, that's the old farmer. Yeah. Uh, work in his field. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. We had the privilege of going to see him a few years back. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, maybe three years. Something like that, before COVID, anyway. Yeah. And for those that don't know, Murray, Murray McLaughlin wasn't really that well known as a songwriter, and I think I, he wrote that song in New York, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Is that right? In a U New York hotel. He, he said he said something like that about it. Yeah. Because he talked about the song. Oh, okay. And that was his biggest hit, and everybody knows him from it. And that was like, must have been on. Yes. Radio in Canada just well, like... lots of people don't yeah. have never heard of it. And by the way, my dad plays, plays guitar too. I guess not so much anymore, but you played guitar first before you learned banjo. Yes. Made a mess of it, but we did it. <laughs> played guitar before I even knew him. I, I, do, I do remember a couple of times, it didn't really happen all that often, but I do remember a couple of times that I would get upset that you would forget or couldn't hear where the next chord change went to or something. Right. I don't think that happened that too often, but... Yeah, I like a lot of folk songs, a lot of history songs, and, and I like songs that are happy, uh, happiness associated to them. I, don't, I got sick of these crybaby songs that all of these country stars singing. My television left me for another wife. You know, the kind of thing. I got right. kind of sick of all that stuff. Crying in your beer. And... Yeah. And then you're not drinking beer anymore. You're drinking tears. Right. So, I just kind of got sick of all. Your this stuff. your wife left you, and you got and your dog got run over by a train, right. and because <laughs> yeah. it's got to have a dog and it's got to have a train, it's got to have beer in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or at least a bar room of some kind. It was the whining bunch of people. Wipe your nose and pick up your shit and get moving, buddy. Well, I, I think, I think that's why you really liked bluegrass a lot. Yeah. And and there's, I can't help it. There's there's some bluegrass in my playing that just comes out. I, it's there. It's sort of because mm -hmm. I started doing it at such a young age. I mean, I I'm, wasn't full bore into it like some people living mm -hmm. in Tennessee and in. The, Carolinas and stuff like that, but I mean, it's there just from listening to Flat and Scruggs and all that stuff. You, you can't help it. It's just it's in your yeah. it's in your ear. Well, I used to sing uh, songs like uh, Watermelon Wine and Tomty Hall, Old Dogs and Children. And, yeah, and I used to go to the old folks' home, and then the older people love that too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they would appreciate it if I was singing something else. Couldn't sing anyway, but they, they appreciated me being just being there. That's all. Well, I, I always thought you were a good singer. Oh. Right. Is that right? I I tried to convince you to start a band, but you wouldn't like have anything to do with it. 
<laughs> nope. Fifty hours of heavy work. No thanks. Time anyway. Right. You gotta have practices and get everybody together and all that. Right. I just wanted to say thanks for uh, sitting down and letting me uh, interrogate you in the bright light. I love you guys, and uh, it was a nice visit oh, I had. I love you, oh, too. we love you, too, and you're so far away. Anytime yeah. you you have anything on Facebook or whatever that you're in, certainly tune into that. YouTube, you mean? Well, I guess I do YouTube. put my YouTube videos on Facebook, too. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, we knew before it wasn't possible to come and visit us or us go and see you, and we sure do appreciate your visit right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm leaving tomorrow, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. It always goes by so fast, doesn't it? It does. Oh, for sure. 